Hello, my absolutely beautiful astrology soulmates. It's me, Stormy Grace. And in this video, we're going to talk about the upcoming eclipse that's going to be happening April 8th at 19 degrees of Aries, setting a pathway for us to really make some decisions to move some things forward. But these decisions are beautifully informed, especially if you've been really tapping into and being honest about what's going on in your own life, not just externally, but what's been going on in your internal life as well. This particular eclipse, I think, gives us a lot more more guidance. And because the guidance is clear, I think that we also have an opportunity to make some real definitive decisions to say, I am doing this. I am committing to this. I'm going this direction. And what that can do is first of all, take us out of like the chaos that we've been feeling. And we've really been experiencing a feeling like what's new, where are we going? What's happening? What's not happening? And to say, I'm putting down the distractions and I've decided I'm heading in this direction, right? So it's a really kind of powerful eclipse. Now, of course, depending on where this eclipse is happening in your chart, what it's triggering off, is it a planet, is it an angle, is it an asteroid? What is it in contact with? Will depend on the intensity that maybe you feel personally. But everybody, this is going to be a global phenomenon. We are all under this sky. So it is not only reshaping the direction and the choices that you're looking to make, but as a collective, what we're doing as well. Now, if you like this kind of content, astrological, coming through the evolutionary lens, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button and stay and hang out with us. I'm Stormy Grace, and I am a practicing professional evolutionary and humanistic astrologer. So I bring you content through both of those lenses to help you, you know, speak the language of astrology, but also have some clarity and some confidence in the journey that you're taking. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe, like, Check out the rest of the videos on this channel. I'm always keeping you informed and we've got a beautiful community that we would love for you to be a part of here, okay? Now, before we get into this, in the description box down below, I've put a little mini breakdown of what's going on at this particular eclipse for you by house, okay? And I put a little breakdown of what's going and how you can also really align and use it. Now, you do need to know which house this is happening in for you in your chart. Now, if you don't have your chart, please click in my description box down below and come get one from me. It's very clear. I make it very clear as to what you're looking at in your chart. Plus, you get a breakdown report of everything that's happening. And you can also check out a video that I'll put at the end end of this video on how to find the active transit in your chart if you're not quite yet seasoned in how to do that, okay? And if you're looking to just really be able to take all the astrology you know and speak that language, then you want to get signed up for my upcoming Knowledge to Fluency class because we're going to do it again and get you speaking the language of astrology. So if that's you, you're serious about astrology, that's what you want in your life, I've got lots of goodies for you in the description box down below. Okay, this moon coming up. Now, first of all, the way I love to talk about this and I love to set the conception is to pattern track backwards. Where have we already been? And what is this particular lunation a part of a system or a family of? Because we're not, nothing's happening as a like one off in a bubble kind of thing, right? There's some patterning. We've been building and walking up to the changes that you're preparing to make. So we want to be able to walk back and see that. Now, first of all, we want to acknowledge that this eclipse is part of an eclipse family. And if you look to the screen, uh, if you look here on the screen, you're going to be able to see I put the entire eclipse family that we've been experiencing. So it's like every six months or so, you know, we're dancing in between our next eclipse and we're having endings, we're having beginnings that are shaping and helping to mold us and peel away different layers of us to get us, get what we don't need anymore out of the way in order to make space for, you know, new energy that needs to come forward, new decisions that you can make because you're seeing yourself, you're seeing your life, you're seeing your, your world in a new lens. But where I'm really excited with this particular lunation is that not only is it eclipsing, but this is the beginning of a new lunar family that is going to be happening over and over again in the Aries energies. So at this particular eclipse, not only is it still a new moon solar eclipse, so your chance to plant your seeds of intention to begin something new, but you're starting not only a six month cycle, but a two and a half year cycle of something you're starting April 8th, right? And if you're listening to this video before April 8th, you've got time to really step back and get some clarity on some decisions you're going to want to make as this eclipse pulls in, because they are not only going to infect you impact you for six months, but for the next two and a half years. 
now in January of 2025, will come to the place of really being able to take bigger action. The action does start. You're going to plant your seeds of intention, make your commitments, and you're going to choose. This is what I'm saying yes to, which means I got to say no to some things over here because that's not working out for me anymore, right? This could kill me back here. This could take my life, my sanity, and my joy. I am choosing to go and grow this way because this is intolerable to me. Okay. And so then when we get to January of 2025, there's more action. Now we're like, da, 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 you know, it's, you're in, you're really moving, you're really doing the thing. Then October of 2025, we're going to pivot. What's not needed anymore that you've experienced in the journey. You're like, oh, I can just pivot from that. I've learned to do that. I'm, I'm ready to go to the next level, or I'm going to pivot. I decided I don't like that version that much, but I do still like these things, right? So you get a pivot point and it's illuminated why you made the decision back in April of 2020 to commit to the direction you've gone. It is a sacred event that happens there because it's for you. It's for you to see what you've been doing with you and why you did it, right? And then we're going to get to July 7th of 2026. And this is where you're going to bring everything at this particular lunation to a close. Now you're going to receive your accolades. You're going to receive your financial, you know, the, the last bit of financial things that are going to come with that. You're going to bring it to a close. You're going to wind it down. So you've got two and a half years invested in you and the decision that you're going to make on April 8th. So I think that's pretty big information to be considering and looking at. That's why it's important to look at the lunar family so that you can see what's really the big impact. Because it's not just that it's April 8th and it's time for a new fresh start and here we go again. We're all being reborn. It's not that. This is an impactful time that sets the course for the next two and a half years of your life. So let's look at it pretty seriously. Okay, now popping over, taking a look into the chart, look at this energy. It is heavily active in not only the Pisces, but definitely the Aries area of the chart. Okay, so we see the lunation happening at 19 degrees. Our luminaries, the sun and the moon are together. And when the luminaries are together, absolutely anything is possible because it's all of the light that we have in the sky, but it's dark and they're together. They are in alignment. The ego, who I am, what I want, the healthy ego that says, I do do this well, and I can accept with humility that I'm good at or I'm bad at something, right? Comes together with the moon, the internal makeup, my emotions, my security, the feels, the intuition about who I am, they are in alignment here, okay? So when these two are together, it's incredibly powerful and anything is possible. Now they're gathering not only together, but pulling in this beautiful energy of Chiron that's also in Aries, right there wrapped into this beautiful conjunction. Now, as we're talking about the Chiron being pulled in, we want to remember that Chiron has represented not just the wounded healer, right? But obviously the wound of the wounded healer, which is, you know, my identity, has had harm to it, or I have believed something that was incorrect. I have a wound to my identity. And when someone has pushed on it, poked on it, when I've carried it around, now it feels too heavy because I've done some healing to my identity, to who I am. I'm less afraid to put down an old identity and live as what I currently really truly am in this world. And that is a really big deal for Chiron to be in that healing position because what it means is that also the ways that I was wounded, first of all, I can be clear on how I can be helpful, right? If I've been wounded in this way, if I had an eating disorder or I had something else that was troubling, that was hard for me, that was really something defining me. Instead of defining me as something bad or sick or down, now this actually becomes where I become a healer. I can go to the people who are like me and I can share with them how I've made the changes in my life. Also, the traumas the wounds, the things, right? I've had time with them years and years and years with them attached to my identity. Like I'm carrying a heavy backpack, pulling my back down, you know, pulling my entire body and being and heart out of alignment. And today I don't see me like that. I forgive me. I forgive those around me. And I see 
that this is not working for me anymore. So I'm ready and able to walk forward. So with the Chiron and with the new moon here in conjunction, this is a choice. I choose to fight this path forward. I choose to be the sacred gardener of this new garden of my life. I choose it and I am choosing it with different sacred eyes and different understanding of who I am. That's really critically important. Now we can see that just out of conjunction is the north node here at 15 degrees. I still think because this is a lunation and it is a node, which is also a part of a lunar story, obviously, um, It's got wide fingers. So the node is still, I believe, heavily involved in here. And it is the space where it is your destiny now. It is your destiny to be walking forward with this new identity, clear, ready to live with a new name, with your chest out, standing and walking firm in your power and who you are and making decisive, being decisive in your decision making of what you will commit to. Now, let's take a, just a swap for a second and see when we're talking about the eclipse that we had March 25th that happened in Libra. That was taking something away. That was bringing an ending. And it was bringing an ending to all of the commitments that you made because they would make someone else happy. Okay? It was about the we. And it doesn't make them bad. It just means that today in your life, they don't work anymore. The relationships with yourself and with others, with the universe, with your thoughts that don't work anymore, that are actually killing you, that are taking your life from you, your joy your time, we're paying for life in the currency of time. So those things that we're taking time that you're not willing to give anymore, you know, the the moldy cheese in the back of the fridge, you got to get it out. It doesn't work. Behaviors that we, we have had and we have engaged in that don't work anymore. This is where we've needed to let go and surrender them. And that is why As that went away and will continue to reveal itself as to why we no longer wish to have a partnership with that, the very influential decisions that we will Aries, we will choose to usher forward, we will say, no, I'm doing this. Bring the new beginnings, but it's clear. It's clear, you know, either something has ended in my life because I have chosen to let it go or the universe revealed that it had to go or it was taken and I am left on a path and I need to walk forward towards life. I have to walk towards life or I have to agree to sit back here in behaviors that are killing me and relationships that are killing me, right? And wherever you are on your path, with your decisions, it's not right or wrong, but we have a cosmic opportunity that is opening a window for each of us to make a move forward, whatever that move may be, great or small, okay? And it is at a destiny point to be able to do that. And again, setting up a two-year cycle in your world of what you're beginning and where you're gonna be able to see the outcomes. Now we can also see... that this particular lunation is ruled by Aries. So the planet Mars, we need to see what Mars is doing. Now, Mars is over here in the vibration of Pisces. So Mars is in what I like to call the water aerobics position, right? Because in Pisces, Mars is not going to be going and just doing, you know, whatever it wants and moving quickly and surely like it would like to. Mars is in the space of water. So what it has to do is it has to swim and it has to take action, trusting its intuition and its emotional intelligence. So this is a really strong positioning. Mars is in conjunction with Saturn. So I am making really serious spiritual decisions that I am going to take action on, right? I am committed to it and I desire it. That is Mars. Mars is I desire. I desire the sanity. I desire the maturity. I desire the leveling up Saturn. I desire the maturity to bring this into my internal space to feel whole in the life that I'm living today, right? So this is a wonderful other piece of the conversation that is happening beautifully here as we look at this conjunction. Now, I also want to just touch quickly on the relationship 
that Venus and Mars have to each other. They began in February, a new two-year cycle and a new dance with each other. And the cycle is really about how we relate to ourselves. So if you can see in the last lunations leading up to this, we've had all of these things getting us to relook at how we relate to ourselves, how we relate to the world. What am I really doing? What pain in my life is dropping me to my knees? What happens when I turn off everything in my house and I have to sit alone? What comes up for me? Because this is telling me where I have an opportunity to do this re-relation, right? Now, the, when we had the eclipse in March, we had um, Venus still in the vibration of Pisces and Venus has moved on now in to Aries. So Venus ushering the way in while Mars is coming up behind, I think is really something to pay attention to. It's symbolic because Venus is saying, I understand the value of the decision we're going to make. I understand the value of the identity that we have today. I understand and I am going to usher it into the world where Venus ushers something in. It is genuinely received as beautiful. It is well received. So the new version of you that is looking to come out, the new decisions that will shape the new version of you will be well received, but it doesn't mean they will be well received by everybody because Mars and Saturn are still in a conjunction with Pisces. Those that are not in alignment for you will leave, right? And those that you are not in alignment with will need to leave. They will dissolve Pisces. They will be brought to a great culmination. Now, energetically, as a whole, okay, one of the things that I think is is kind of neat looking at the symbology of all of the Pisces and then all of the um, Aries energy is that in Pisces, we go to the great womb. Everything that we have learned in the last year, everything we have learned as we've traveled through all the rest of the signs comes together. So we really have a very full picture of who we are, what the experiences have been. And we've just come out of Pisces season where we all got to go back into the sacred room, womb and really assimilate what we have learned, what we've been through, get quiet with who we are. And depending on where Pisces is at in your chart, maybe it was very specific to that particular area where you were bringing this culmination, but it also has been quite floaty. You know, I don't know if you've experienced that where it's like, what is going on? I am feeling the world at intensity 10,000. You know, now I do think that Pluto in Aquarius has a ton to do with that, but it's like you're really experiencing this energy and the lack of groundedness um, pretty intensely. And it's because who knows? Like, I don't know. I'm not sure. Everything's everything. That's the space of the great womb. And now as we see all of these planets creeping up towards the Aries position, it is like, okay, you know, I'm getting out of the sauna, I'm getting out of the pool, and I'm on dry land, right? Like I can... I can start to walk. I can know that my feet are planted and I am making firm decisions to move something forward. I am i don't know exactly who and what I am and what I'm going to be when I grow up, but I know it's not that over there. I'm done with that. Or I'm willing to start taking steps to be done with that version of living that way of relating. You know, go to your particular chart and see in your airy space what are you making a decision to move towards? Because whatever you're letting go is on the opposite house. Okay, so let's say that this is in your first house. Okay, Aries is in your first house. You're maybe making some really strong decisions to move towards, consciously move towards one-on-one -on -one relationships. And you're letting go of so much of this, I got it. I got it right? Because that I got it might honestly be killing you and taking your joy. And you'll know that that's true. When you honestly go home at night, what is the thought or the thing that keeps coming up for you? What is the thing driving you? Because there's maybe a pain point there. And that's where I also think that Pluto in Aquarius in this lovely conversation here um, with Venus in this sextile is incredibly useful as well at this lunation because Pluto has created the pain point for each of us. It's painful. Whatever it is, it's brought up for you. Old ideas, 
old associations and you can't get away from it. If you're having an experience where you're like, I can't explain why nothing I'm doing is working and I can't get away from this pain, fear, uncomfortability, that is a Plutonian experience because what Pluto will do is make you go in and down to get into it, right? To see what is the pain that's holding you there. What's the idea you have stuck? And it will also push you towards whatever your faith is, whatever you you call faith, okay? Whatever that is for you, it will make you cry out to something with a willingness to take different actions. And I wish that humans could just be like, you know what? I was thinking about it. I've had this terrible uh, subconscious, unconscious belief holding me back from the world, you know, um, and I just thought about it and I just not going to do that anymore. (laughs) I wish humans could be like that, but you know, nine out of 10 of us are not that way. We kind of get backed into a corner and then we go, okay, hands out. I'm not going to just figure this out anymore. Someone's going to have to show me the way forward. I have to ask for help. I have to accept the training. I have to go forward, right? Because if not in Pisces season, what I think a lot of the energy could have felt like is like, yeah, I have it within me. You know, I can do this. I'm going to build this. I'm going to go here. I'm going to have this experience. I need to just do it, right? It's very floaty and it's in the space of idealism. And you're like, yeah, well, I understand that I potentially have a great business idea, but I have no clients. Like, where are the clients, right? It's It becomes really very real where it's like, oh, I got to make some decisions when we get into airy season, you know? And the thing I love about the way Stephen Forrest talks about Aries, he talks about it in the Book of Fire. So if you haven't read that, it's in my... Um, It's in my description box down below. But when he talks about Aries in the Book of Fire, he's like, the Aries energy in each of us is, I deserve to live, damn it. I deserve to live, damn it, right? So what you're going towards, you're also going towards with that kind of attitude where you're like, listen, I deserve to be here. It's not that I'm going to be bossy. It's not that I'm going to be pushy, but I deserve to be here, right? I'm ready to grow in this way. I'm making a decision to be here. Um, You know, one of the things that I just, I can share this with you is that we're still allowed. Mars is still in Pisces. We're still allowed to baby step our, our way to success here. We're allowed to babysit our way, but you got to commit and then you can baby step your way. And here's something that I always do is that when I want to try something new or I'm like unsure and I like this resistance comes up in me and I'm like, I need to grow. It's terrible. This isn't going very well. And I'm like, got that resistance that kind of comes up, right? I will put myself in vicinity of the thing that I want to do or I want to grow towards. And I start to just gently bring it in, right? When I wanted to learn how to level up my business, I didn't want to be told what I wasn't doing right. I didn't. That's just the truth, right? And so I put myself in the vicinity of content where people were talking about mistakes you could be making to level up your business. And I would listen for five or 10 minutes a day and then turn it off. But slowly it started to permeate, right? And that's very, I think, you know, the baby stepping in the Pisces energy, but the Aries energy is like, I'm making a decision. I am going this way and I deserve this, damn it. Right. And so I hope that you get to have that kind of experience with this Aries energy. And I'm curious, let me know in the comment section down below, what are you deserving to be here about? Damn it. But it comes from a place of pain. You are leveled out. You're like, I can't just figure this out anymore. I'm going to have to invest. I'm going to have to invest my time. I'm going to have to be taught and I'm going to have to commit to moving forward from where I was at because this is not working. Now, I will say this. If what is still hanging on back here is not yet painful enough to me, or I don't know yet that it's painful, I'm not going to let it go. I'm not going to let it go, right? That's not the nature of how this goes. But as soon as that pain point is coming up, I either have to keep going on the way that I was going, pretending it's going to work out, or I have to accept some help. I have to accept some material help, some guidance, some spiritual help. But as soon as I say, yes, I deserve to be here, damn it, the help comes. The North Node is involved here. I am in a different relation to myself. 
So this is an opportunity, my beautiful friends, to start something gorgeous over the next two and a half year cycle that will unfold, but decisions are available to be made right now now. Okay. So let me know in the comment section um, down below, what does this look like for you? What's happening in your chart? Where is this playing out for you? I can tell you this particular eclipse for me is going to be happening in my eighth house. And I have made a ton of changes in my second house where all the Libra is at. Plus I had a Libra stellium over there, right? So I've made tons of changes around my money. I shored up anything that there was a financial hole happening at all. I have rebuilt programs. I've built new programs. My husband and I have put other things in place financially. I mean, it has really been, but it came on the back of pain, right? Something we were like, whoa, where did that hole come from? Right? It was not gentle. We went gently into the night and decided to change our lives. We were like, what is that? (laughs) Right? And in it gave us a space to make some really good progress, baby step our way towards something else. And as this particular eclipse comes, I am looking so incredibly forward to hitching my new wagon to the back of it and not only getting to go into more depth, more intimacy, understand assets, have an experience with the tax systems in multiple countries, but also to shed another layer for me of old ideas about what I'm allowed to have financially, intimately, freedom-wise, astrologically in this world. So share with me in the comment section down below, what are you hitching your new vision to at this particular new moon solar eclipse? Because I want to send you love. I want to send you support. And listen, If you are one of our friends who is, first of all, needing some guidance, if you need some help, this is tough stuff. And if you are in the last progressed, last quarter, progressed balsamic or progressed new moon phase, these energies may feel heavier to you than someone else in a different phase. And if you need help to walk through that, put your hand up. Come work with me. I would love to walk with you, okay? And if you're one of our friends who is trying to build your business or you're not sure what kind of business you want to build, come see me at Legatia Academy. It is my new business school. It's up, it's running, and I am offering my new program, which is brilliant, at an entry rate. So come and check it out. The Legatia link will be in the description box down below. Like this video, share, subscribe, leave a comment for me, and I'll see you next time, beautiful. Bye.